God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. Freedom is indivisible. There is no S on the end of it. You can erode freedom, diminish freedom, but you cannot divide freedom and choose to keep some freedoms while giving up others. I read this quote this week as I was thinking about our independence here in the United States. This last Sunday, we celebrated Independence Day, the celebration of our country's formation and the ideal that every person is created with certain inalienable rights, the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are foundations to our nation, but they're also biblical truths. They are theological truths, truths that you and I hold dear. The t-shirt I'm wearing today says that freedom is not free. The reference at the very bottom, which you can't quite see in the image, is John 15, verse 13. And in that, Jesus says that he has made us free. But earlier in the book of John, Jesus talks about freedom in another way. He's talking to a group of people who are um, hurting and people who are also uh, pressing in on Jesus to get him to move away from his uh, desired outcome and goal in his ministry. And so in John chapter 8, we read these words. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. My friends, truth does set us free. When we live within a lie, we are bound by those who wish to lie to us. We are bound by the images and the concepts that are in our minds that are false. The concepts that move us away from the freedom that we have. When we know the truth, we understand truth to its fullness, and we can live in that truth and ultimately live in God. Jesus says later in the Gospel of John, and actually chapter 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so he refers back to this chapter 8 and reminds us that he is the truth, and truth leads to freedom. He goes on in chapter 8 to say this, they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Now, in this particular time, and we've talked within some of our other devotions about the captivity that the Israelites were under, but at this time, when Jesus is talking to them, the people that he's talking to have always been and known freedom. They've known uh, no oppressor, no people who are over the top of them. Of course, this could be said of most of us. Some listening to this devotion would have gone through times of war and rumors of war and times when our freedom was threatened. But for many of us, as we live in today, in the year 2021, we have not known what it's like to be oppressed. We do not know what it's like to be under the thumb of someone else. We've known freedom. And so this passage could be easily addressed to us. And we might look back at Jesus and say, how could I be a slave to anyone? I live in a land of freedom. I live in a land of opportunity. I live in the United States, a place of freedom, a place where I can celebrate my freedom together. But Jesus replies in this way, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you that I'm telling you what I have seen in my father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. If the son sets you free, you are free indeed. My friends, this flag that is on my chest, the flag that is behind me as a background, has stood for centuries as a symbol for freedom. It stood as a symbol for those who are oppressed, those who you long to be free. 
and it's invited others to come in a way to celebrate and understand freedom in this nation. Over the last number of years, the flag has come to represent other things. And folks have seen oppression and offense at the flag. I find this to be quite sad. I think this flag is a great stance for freedom. But we also must understand that it's not just about being an American, but ultimately our allegiance is to Christ. And it is Christ who sets us free. And many who have followed Christ have also laid down their life so others can be free, not just to celebrate God through Jesus, but also to be free in their lives. I am grateful to be an American. I celebrate freedom this week as we remember Independence Day, but I also recognize and am grateful for my Savior who has set me free from my sins so that I can live in that freedom and be anything that God desires and wants for me. I am not at the beck and call and the command of someone else. I'm under the authority of Jesus, and it is he who sets me free for joyful obedience to him. And when we can joyfully obey, we, uh, obey, we know that God is good and that God's love will flow through us. It is my hope that you will know this freedom in Christ today and that you will be grateful for the men and women who fought and died and allowed our nation to be free so we could celebrate his love for today. I hope this helps you today, and I hope you'll uh, understand and fully embrace the freedom that God gives you in Jesus Christ. God bless you, and have a great day.